shake out and <clears throat> who you want to bring along and, and, and use here? Yeah, I, I'm uh, going to be asking our one of our assistants at Michigan, Nick Schnabel. Um, so I'll be talking with him. We'll be going through a process of interviewing pitching coaches. I'm evaluating the support staff positions as well. Uh, but I, I won't rush that, and I'll be very thorough in that process to make sure we have the very best coaches and support staff for our Clemson team. Is he welcome around the program? How will you use him? Because he's obviously a great resource. He, he's an unbelievable resource, and he's a great friend, and he's a great mentor, and he's been a great mentor uh, ever since I worked for him 20 years ago. And uh, my answer to that is we have to have Coach Leggett involved in this program and around our players and the energy that he brings. And whatever capacity that is and whatever title that is, I don't know, but I just know the program will be better with, with his energy involved. Sure. Well, <laughs> well, when I when I when I made that that uh, I don't know if you want to call it a challenge, but I when I when I lobbed that out there to Coach Corbin that I I, I would work the same hours as you, uh, that meant my days pretty much starting in the office around 6 a.m. and not finishing until about 9 p.m. There used to be a Pepino's down the street, so we would hit that up and. Uh, there was also a $2 movie theater, and I was a frequent occupant of uh, the $2 movie because I didn't have cable TV. Uh, but I, I, I don't have any hobbies now anyways. I didn't have any hobbies then. I just love to, I love to work. I love to coach. I love to be involved. I love to be all in. And um, I didn't have much of a life, to be honest with you. It was just coaching. <laughs> I know you've been back here before, Coach, but some of those emotions of remembering that struggle or whatever you want to call that existence in 02 kind of hit you when you got back into town here in the last couple of days? I wouldn't say it struggle. It was a tidal wave of just almost like nostalgia. Like, you know, how, how you feel about something you, you were the first time you did it and the first, it, you just, it holds a special place. And so walking down the steps and, you know, and then just seeing all the upgrades and all the changes, but then remembering the cages were over there and hitting with Michael Johnson in the cages till two in the morning, you know, he's trying to fix his swing and, just all the little th all the little memories like that you know the the home run mj hits into the trees but there's not a tree there anymore it's a, it's a light pole and um it's just all that stuff it's just it, it it just rushed back and i've been kind of uh just going down memory lane today quite a bit and it uh i just i'm i'm thrilled to get to wear the tiger paw again and say i'm part of the clemson family Sure. Well, I think it was the recognition of how lucky I was to be surrounded by Coach Leggett, Coach Corbin, Coach O'Sullivan, and then that team of superstar players of, of that type of success to, you know, your first year coaching. It's like, oh, yeah, we'll just win 54 games and be number one in the country and go to Omaha. That's just how you do it. And, uh, you know, so for me, it was a lot of times drinking from the fire hose and being a sponge and taking it all in. But uh, I just... I just am, will forever be thankful and grateful for not only being on staff with those guys, but the fact that Coach Corbin, Coach O'Sullivan, and myself shared a single office uh, every single day. And you want to talk about accelerating the learning curve, that was it. So it's, it's all of those things fortified by our team's success and still maintaining contact and relationships with those guys. Coach, this is a team that obviously have a hand in recruiting. There's been some players that have tra uh, already transferred away. What's your pitch to these guys as you were meeting with them that, hey, I'm the guy that you need to be sticking with? I think, I think that's natural in today's world of college athletics. There's, there's transitions and there's attrition, and that's, it is what it is. But we had a, a Zoom call today with all the players and you know, just expressed you know, my excitement for you know, getting, to, getting to be their coach and look forward to building relationships with all of them. And, connecting to our history and some of the prominent alums in this program and getting everybody back and how we can move the needle forward. Uh, but we've got good players on this team. I mean, that's everyone I've talked to. That's very clear. We've got some very good talent on this roster. And uh, our, our opportunity this summer will maybe be to 
to add a couple more players to it and go into the fall with uh, a championship team. Eric, when I looked at your last Michigan team, there were a lot of guys from all over the country. What will be your recruiting footprint here at Clemson? You like dropping a rock in, into, into Lake Hartwell and watching the ripples. We, we will dominate the state of South Carolina, and then we will attack the region. We'll look at the entire eastern seaboard from Maine down to Miami, and then we'll target any players around the country, whether it's the Midwest or anywhere else, uh, that would fit the profile of a Clemson baseball player, or the, the culture that we're going to be building. Uh, so, but it'll, it'll, start, it'll start with the state of South Carolina and move out from there. Graham, I may be asking you to look too far in the future, but you've invested monetarily with, with him and his staff. But knowing that 11.7 isn't exactly equal as it is at other schools, the scholarship limit, do you have any plans to further invest infrastructure in trying to make that a little bit more equal to other schools around the country to, to keep Clemson competitive? Yeah, thanks, David. We, we've talked a lot about all the other it's, it's top 15 program and that commitment that starts here, but you're right, it's, it's much more than that. It's bricks and mortar facilities. We have uh, recently upgraded our indoor hitting cages. We have designs for a, a baseball, softball, indoor, um, indoor practice facility, essentially. Um, that's just very preliminary, but that's, that's probably the next big project and, and how it would support both of those programs and, and other programs. Um, we've talked a lot about, uh, through the, the get to know and the, the search process, and particularly with Coach, uh, you can tell very cerebral, very uh, program management oriented, very curious. And so we talked a lot about 11.7 stretchers and the intentionality that we have administratively with aid and how we can help with, with the new Alston dollars that are available and some of the other um, summer school investment, things like that, just to kind of help, help those things because all, all those little things matter. And so that's our job administratively. Infrastructure to your question, David, aid helps, and then what that looks like for, for staff, and, and, and it starts with people. So all those things matter, and those have all been baked within our, our review and, and discussion with Coach Backage and him back to us as he's evaluating our commitment. It's easy to say, and we talk about top 15, but that means so much more, and that's what we're committed from that inside out. Eric, you mentioned the work ethic you picked up here all those years ago. I'm curious, are there any other lessons you carried with you from 20 years back? Here with Coach and Coach and yeah, all, all three of them brought a unique, unique character traits to, to a program that was just the perfect blend and combination of what makes championship team and builds championship players. You know, Coach Leggett was, you know, one of the most hands-on, high-energy coaches. You know, it doesn't matter what the drill is, base running, infield play, cuts, relays, rundowns, he's, he's in it, he's in the mix. Um, Sully and his competitive fire and just getting the, the pitchers and the catchers to just compete on the mound, behind the plate. Uh, and Coach Corbin, just the, the precision level of organization, the thoughtfulness and thoroughness in the recruiting, uh, and just the attention to detail in every single thing that he did, plus the ability to coach hitting and teach hitting, you know, all of that uh, and so much more. Uh, that was the foundation of, of moving forward. And you take all the best parts of all the coaches that have impacted you and you try to, you know, put your own twist on it, so to speak, which we've done, you know, with player development and the deep dive we've done into helping players unlock their bodies and their minds over the last four or five years. But foundationally, fundamentally, um, I've only ever been a part of one coaching tree, and that's the Jack Leggett coaching tree. And I'm very proud to be a part of that. the situation here and where we're at. But are there any other things maybe you talked to Graham about that maybe you'd like to see the program kind of get better at and improve from a facility standpoint? Not at first look. Um, I, I've been blown away. I mean, we'll, we'll probably do a walkthrough and a needs assessment and, you know, maybe a fold over desk where you're sitting right there so our players can take notes. But other than that, this is this is darn near perfect. And uh, I think it's I think it's a cathedral. It's spectacular. Jiffy has been spending a lot uh, over the last <laughs> week, uh, but this is a this is a new addition. Um, we we did we did I did have one orange tie for a fundraiser that we did uh, this past April for a, a pediatric cancer event. So I, I did have one orange thing in the closet, but uh, no, we we got some new we got some new stuff this week. Eric, what are you going to be looking for in a new position coach? 
what am I looking for in a new pitching coach? Uh, somebody who can who can bring the simplicity to an ad, what seems like a, a very advanced way of teaching pitching <coughs> teaching pitching these days. It's it's one thing to teach throwing. It's another thing to teach pitching, and you see a lot of that that line being being blended and throwing is not necessarily pitching and developing your stuff is great and it's important to develop velocity and movement but you also have to command the baseball and throw it where you want to and that location component is not only in games but in bullpens and catch play and then there's a whole controlling the game component where it's important to pitch with quick tempo it's important to be quick to the plate it's important to field your position uh, so all of those things plus being ultra competitive on the mound when when all else fails that me versus you mentality and I'm just going to get the dude out so those things anything else thank you very much thanks for being here thank you guys